6.29 remaining in the third period of Florida versus Detroit yesterday. This sequence was the 48 second sequence that I kind of believe defines the entire Red Wings season so far. Okay, no, that's not correct. Not defining the entire season so far per se, but defining the way this Wings team wants to play so far. Because if you were to say, okay, if you were to define the season, you'd define the rookies, you'd define a whole bunch of things, you'd define the acquisitions Eiserman made, you'd do a lot of stuff. But this 48-second sequence in yesterday's game, which was ultimately a Detroit Red Wings loss, the Florida Panthers are now 8-0-0 on the year, so congrats to them, I guess. This 48-second sequence was pretty much the Red Wings going out there and just putting it all on the line. Yesterday's game played like a playoff game, and it's crazy because the Red Wings hadn't made the playoffs in... When was the last time they made the playoffs? 2015? 16? Something like that? But my goodness, we spoke the previous Red Wings video about how this team was able to come back, and how they defied all the odds and had a 2-0 deficit to Ovi and the Caps, eventually tying it up in regulation and winning in overtime off a snipe by Dylan Larkin. Hey, kind of the same story that we had over here in last night's action against the Panthers, because yesterday's game saw the Florida Cats get up to a 2-0 lead. And, I mean, it's not really surprising because the Capitals, or excuse me, not the Caps, I said the Cats earlier, so it kind of got me thinking about the Caps. Yeah, so the Panthers have been a really good team, so it's not a surprise where Lutz Sorainen gets his second on the year and Alexander Barkov gets himself a goal too. But throughout the second period, the Red Wings started to fight back. Sam Gagne got himself his second on the year to bring the Wings within one. And then we had the third. This third period was way more fun than any period we had seen the Red Wings play last year. Right? Last year, two years ago, this game yesterday saw ourselves with a Red Wings team that had fight, that had grit, that had heart. This team went out there and blocked so many shots in that 48 second sequence, and to be fair, this was not a good sequence for the Red Wings. It was not because you could not clear the gosh darn puck. They had so many opportunities to clear it out, but no, they give it up at the blue line and it's taken over by Florida again. And granted, it made for some very exciting hockey. It wasn't good hockey per se, but it was admirable. It was bold. It was shot blocking E, I guess. And the Red Wings ultimately survived, thanks to the legs of Adam Ernie, thanks to Robbie Fabry's diving efforts, and thanks to Nadelkovich making the odd save or two. That was an absolute game stopper as well. You could see it in the fans, dude. The entire building was up with their hands in the air, cheering their lungs out, because my goodness, did we just see the embodiment of the spirit Iserman has instilled within this club for this year. And give it a few more minutes, because as the Red Wings cycled it around a little bit more, you had yourselves it was a Moritz Sider point shot that was tipped by Pia Sutter. That's his first goal on the year for Detroit over here. It ties the game up at 2-2, and for the second straight game, the Red Wings are going to overtime, battling a 2-0 deficit earlier on. And even though they lost, Alex Barkov did his thing. He got himself the goal, assisted by Huberto and Mackenzie Wieger. This was still one of those games where you look at it and you say, man, what a great game. We had an octopus on the ice. How crazy was it that the fan that had the octopus over there did not throw it at all? Like, until the game was tied 2-2. That's when the octopus showed up. And you have to think about the guy who brought that in. It's like, dude... You held on to that for so long. You believed in this team. You didn't just throw it over when you thought the game was nearing its end. Nah. You waited until the perfect opportunity for Pia Sutter to score the game-tying goal, and then you threw it out there. Maybe the best time would have been to wait until the Red Wings scored the overtime winner, and then you could have thrown it, but because the Red Wings did not win, it was the correct choice in this circumstance. Either way, no judging the octopus throwing fans in Little Caesars Arena because there definitely are a whole bunch of those and we kind of recognize it, you know, it's a tradition. It's awesome to see. But still, Red Wings fans who had watched last night's game walking out of the arena all kind of felt the same way. Who cares that we just lost? We had our money's worth. We paid a very fair and honestly kind of undervalued admission to watch this hockey game because that game was priceless. Just watching the experience of this team going out there, shot 
blocking the heck out of their legs and doing everything that we watched them do. It's kind of funny, because last year, and two years ago, I guess, because, you know, I've been kind of covering the Red Wings and a lot of the guys that they have in their system for a while now, and because of that, it's really gotten me familiar with the prospects and the fans and everything that you and Detroit like, and I owe a lot of that to you, because the Red Wings fan base has somewhat accepted me as being an appropriate messenger of messages, okay, that's kind of redundant, an appropriate messenger of the news and the updates and the prospects and giving status quo statements, I guess, as to how things are going on with this team. But I would be saying the past few years that anything that happens in the Red Wings season that is good, even remotely good. Those are the things you got to focus on, because the Red Wings for the past few years were a bad team. They sucked. They're always losing games. They're going down there in the standings. They're winning draft lotteries, or excuse me, they're losing draft lotteries too. They can't even win that. And so anytime you had yourselves a win, or anytime you had yourselves a cool highlight, or anytime you had yourselves what was a really interesting prospect come in and showcase themselves off overseas, those were the positives to focus on. I was like, yeah, you know, it's all about the little victories when you're cheering for a bad team, because you're not going to be going out there hoping your team goes 82-0. You're going to be disappointed, and it's going to make you really frustrated being a fan of this team if that's what you're expecting. But now... It's no longer the little victories. It's no longer the small things that you got to focus on. It's okay. We have two rookie of the year candidates on this team. We have a spirit that does not waver. It does not die. And it continues going on when the going gets tough. Imagine telling the fan base like a year or two ago, you would get to a point in the rebuild where you have a 19-year-old Swedish winger playing on your first line with Dylan Larkin. You'd have a 21-year-old Moritz Sider, or excuse me, he's 20, I believe. Yeah, 20-year-old big 6'4 right-handed German defenseman being an absolute stud on your blue line. These two would be probably some of the most important players on your team. And in just 2021... You guys are going to be winning games, you're going to be fighting back 2 nothing deficits, you would be challenging Ovi in the Caps, you would be challenging Barkov and the Panthers in these showdowns, and you would be blocking shots, and you'd be doing all this crazy stuff. Imagine showing that 48-second shift to somebody two years ago. You don't even need to be a fan of the Wings to appreciate that clip. Sure, as I said, it was bad hockey, because you couldn't clear the puck, but it just got you feeling some sort of way. You felt excited, you felt the emotions, you saw the fans in the building step up to their feet, screaming their heads off because that was incredible. Moments like that 48 second shift, that's what sports are all about. And if you showed that clip to anybody in the Red Wings Nation two years ago, they would've been like, wow. That looks exciting. That looks really fun. That looks like a team that you could cheer for. They're down by one and they block all these shots. And then you could even throw in a bonus. Okay, look, they scored later. They scored a goal and the entire building came ablaze with excitement. That is the type of hockey the Red Wings are building up right now. And it's no secret that between Montreal, between Vancouver, between Detroit, the three teams that I cheer for the most, not in that order, by the way, I'm having the most fun watching the Red Wings and doing videos for this team and talking about their prospects because everything is going right. Even though this team isn't a top-of-the-line team, these ain't the Tampa Bay Red Wings we're talking about right here. We're not talking about Nikita Kucherov, Connor McDavid, whatever, playing on the wings. We're talking about the regular guys, plus some prospects that made themselves homes on the team. But this is fun. And just based off the viewership, it's fun to you as well. Because it's no secret, you know, I look at my numbers, I try to pay attention as to what's doing well on the channel, etc. And Montreal fans are miserable right now. Okay, maybe not right now, they're playing the Kings as I'm recording this video, it's tied 1-1 right now. But Montreal videos, not really doing all too well. Why? Because there's apathy towards that fan base. Vancouver was hot at the beginning, but we're seeing problems with that team. Therefore, the fans are starting to lose a little bit of interest and the views are getting a little bit lower because it's like, okay, we know the team is bad. How many more videos can we make talking about how bad they are? But for Detroit, there's something new every day. And yesterday's game was beautiful. They didn't win, but my goodness, what a great game that was. It was like the playoffs like the playoffs. And it gets me super excited as to thinking, okay, what 
is a 22-year-old Lucas Raymond playing with a 23-year-old Moritz Sider in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs going to look like? The Red Wings making the dance for the first time in like eight years? How is that going to look like? That's going to be fantastic. Man, I'm going to go down an entire fantasy trip talking about the Red Wings making the playoffs, eh? Let's cut that off before we get too deep into that conversation. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the Red Wings game against the Panthers yesterday? I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls and I and I. And bye.